Hello, FOSS2. It is September 26. It's been a couple of weeks since I did my first video. I thought we'd give this another crack. House is quiet again. I knew if I didn't sneak in now and do it, it'd be at least two weeks till I get another chance because it's school holidays here. So the uh, kids are all at a uh, engineering uh, robotics class this afternoon. So I'm going to put peace and quiet to myself. Um, anyway, the last few weeks around here have been pretty stinking exciting. We've had bushfires. Closest it came was about two blocks from the house, and you know, that's just a bit close for comfort. A lot of acreage burned, but I think in the grand scheme of things, when it all was said and done, they lost like one shed in the whole neighborhood area that was affected. So I thought that was pretty impressive on the fireies to be able to contain that because there were some points where it was looking a bit crazy. Um, so, yeah, big bit of an excitement there. And of course, we have a foreign exchange student staying with us at the moment. She's not exactly used to bushfire Australia prone environment. So I think she got a bit of an eye opener when she saw just quite how close that all came to the house. But all good. Um, so beyond that, I have sent my eldest to Japan. She is off gallivanting without her mother for two weeks, I think, with her class. I'm going to have to do something about this whole reflection on the glasses, apparently. I had that problem last week, um, a couple weeks ago. Yeah, so... She's having a great time, I think, seeing all the sights and exploring and not having to listen to her mother. So, yeah, I think we... She's been gone about three days, so we'll see her back in about a week and a half. I think she's having a great time. Um, as far as stitching, I have mostly been racing the clock still on the um, Chatelaine threads arriving. So, been working Dominantly on that Teresa Wensler, I will show you in a minute. I don't think I was smart enough to put it within range before I sat down. We'll have to deal with that. And the save the stitches. Um, I do have the save the stitches here, so let's look at that first. So you see? I can't quite remember where I was up to. I filmed the last video, but I'm sure all the black in these diamonds along here must be pretty well new and then everything below it. I currently got it all blocked out all the way down and I'm going through just doing, I don't know if you can see, just the black parts. I'll go back in and fill with metallics after I finish the black. But I have to decide what I want to do with metallics. I picked three colors that kind of match the fabric. Let's see if we can get this to work. So you can see the sheen from the blue. This one has some green. And this one has gold. So I think generally I like the subtlety of the, you know, just a little bit of color that kind of matches the fabric. But some of them, I've ended up doing two strands of the metallic thread. And some of the blocks, like that diamond up the top. I don't think it likes focusing. It looks really gobby. Um, what can I put behind it? Craft supplies to the rescue. Let's see if this focuses any better. I'm not sure if that focused any better or not. Anyway, I reckon that particular diamond looks a bit gobby. And so I was debating whether or not I should be using some 
of these blocks with two threads and some with one. Basically, if it looks gobby, go back to one. Whether to persist with two and everything. This is the other one. It's gold on the end. Basically, it makes it look like it's just a great big knot in the middle there. Um, rather than, you know, two circles, uh, not circles, squares, diamonds. So, I don't know what to do about that. The other thing was I went and I bought darker versions of the color. So a dark blue, a darker green, and a brown. I'm debating whether I should rip the gold, light green, light blue out and replace it with the darker um, colors. But like I said, I kind of like the subtle stuff. So, I don't know. If you have any great ideas for me, let me know. Because eventually I'm going to get to the end of the black and I'm going to have to make a decision. And, you know, that's hard. Decisions are very hard. So, that is that project. I use that one mostly when I'm traveling. So that's why it's been pulled out lately. We uh, had to take my daughter to the airport which is four hour drive from here to get to Cairns. And um, four hours is a long time to spend in the car. So I stitched. Fortunately, my husband drives. And unfortunately, we had to bring two cars back from Cairns. So I had to drive too. And that kind of stunk because there was no stitching. Um, yeah, so anytime I have to go in town, sit, watch somebody play a football game or whatever it is that's going on, I'll take that one along with me just because when it's a single color a thread and it's so much easier to deal with than the Wensler. Um, okay. So I think I showed you this little project um, as a work in progress. So I suppose this is my first official fully finished object for floss tubes. It's pretty minor. So I had the piece of fabric that I'd gone and I'd um, dyed. It was the test dye for my soon to be Chatelaine. And then I'd gone and added paints, nice metallic sparkly paints and stuff to kind of grunge it all up. And I went through and I sewed all these numbers on and then my eldest picked that background fabric. So I thought that worked all right. Kind of grungy like the front and just some black fabric around the bottom to bind it. Um, and then in between the two layers, there's just a scrap of batting. My eldest is a quilter. So there's bucket loads of scrap batting and whatnot floating about the house. So I just scavenged a bit of that. I did get in trouble though. Clearly I did a crowdy job of kind of making my quilting line in the middle. But given it's just a work tool, I don't really care. But when she saw how much movement there was, I got a bit of a lecture about how I didn't do enough quilting wrong. Shouldn't have that much movement in your box. So clearly I should have put another quilting line, maybe one, two more, and split it up evenly, but you know. But it's a tool, so basically on my chart, I will have a, one of the symbols will have a little 10 written next to it, and that's that thread color. So when I get to working on more color changes, and I find one that's got numbers written next to it, I know I don't have to go thread a new needle, I've already got one started. And kind of shortcut that process. Um, my old solution had the numbers, uh, sorry, the symbols written on tape. So I started with this first couple right in the symbol on a bit of scratch paper and putting it on. But you know, to be honest, I haven't really been missing the symbols. So after I moved everything over, I just didn't bother. And I think until it bothers me, I just won't bother. It seems workable enough with just the numbers. So that's what we're doing for now because I'm lazy. And if I don't have to do it, I'm not going to do it. 
Anyway, it's great being fabric because this whole lot, when I'm done stitching, fold it up, shove it in a bag, bumps your uncle. Um, then for the actual Wensler, I am getting close. I think I'm going to win. I'm going to finish this night before that Chatelaine comes because I haven't even heard that those threads have shipped yet. So I, uh, I think I'm going to get there because all I've got is backstitch left now. You can see I've done all the backstitch from about his that yellow border down. It's all totally done. Um, there's a fair bit missing in here around his sword. Where's that? Board. So there's a fair bit missing still in around his sword and his cape and the horse's head that needs to go in. Um, then I think up the top, it's more or less his body's done. So it's just basically his face needs to go in because he looks a bit freaky without a face and his helmet. So. I don't know, I'm hoping another couple, maybe even tonight, if I really sit down and put some effort into it, I can finish that up. Um, I got all the specialty stitches done up that side. I don't think a few of them were done last time I showed you guys, but not the whole lot. So I'm pretty pleased with how that's turning out. The back stitching always makes it look so freaking awesome once you get all that detail in there. And I think there's some metallic cording that runs over the top of that seashell thing. I may leave that for the very end when I do the beading. Um, I don't know. I, anything that lays real loose like that, I tend to leave it right till the end just so it doesn't get abused while you're um, stitching because I stitch in hand. So everything's got to be a bit durable so it doesn't just get gobbied up in my fist and ruined. Um, so, yeah, I'm pretty pleased with that. Then I did a little bit of shopping in the last couple of weeks. Let's see if I can find that. I think I was really organized and put it in this drawer over here. So these first two I found just on a stash unload type thing. But my mom's kind of big into Santas. So I thought, you know, I haven't made her a Santa in years. When I was little, I used to do, well, it started with my grandmother, who was big into ceramics, and grandma would make her a Santa every year. And then as I got to doing ceramics with grandma, I'd make her Santas too. So now she has Santas all through her house. So they stay up all year long, all through her kitchen, all these Santas. And I thought, I haven't made her a Santa in years, so maybe I'll make her a cross-stitch Santa. So there's that one. And there's this one as well. I'm not entirely sure which one I'll do. I'll grab them both. I think I like the other one better, actually. It's one of those, once you get one, you might as well get two, because, you know, otherwise postage for one, it's just a waste. So I'm not going to get started in the next five minutes, but, you know, one day. Uh, the other thing that came in is I do a fabric of the month from Color Cascade. And oh, that comes off really blue on the computer. It's actually purple. And not even close. It's really purple. It's like the purple, like I reckon this would be perfect for like a little girl's birth announcement sort of thing. Something with the, um, you know, the unicorn, the lots of colors, really cartoony, you know, just screams that kind of little girl color. And of course it's got the opalescence through it too. So look at how they sparkle on the computer though. That's pretty cool. Um, so yeah, I reckon that would be fabulous use for that. Um, 
And it just says mystery fabric, fabric of the month for August 18. So I don't know. I don't know whether there's like a, you know, which color it was if you tried to like go to the store and order it from Color Cascades. So no, I haven't tried these fabric of the month things before. This is my second one I got. Um, and then actually I haven't stitched on these opalescent ones either. So this will be interesting to see. I need to actually try and see whether I like them. I kind of think once I've got a few opalescents, it's not something I'm going to want to do a heap on. So I'm hoping maybe a spot will come up in the plain fabric. But when I was querying, is it Tammy? I don't know. When I was querying the lady that is Colored Cascade Fabrics, um, she didn't have any non-opalescent in the linen um, fabrics. So acquire a stash, accumulate. Clearly now I've got to go find a unicorn pattern. So if anybody knows, because I have a new niece. Um, and we're going back to see said niece in the States in a couple months. So if anybody knows of a really cute unicorn birth sampler for a baby girl, let me know because I reckon that would be perfect. What else have I got in here? All right. My last project or acquisitions. I went and I bought fabric to do... Um, Project bags, because I've just been using these clear ones, but they're nowhere near as fun as when they're pretty and, you know, beads and blingy and whatnot. And I got a sewing machine. I thought, oh, I'm going to make myself some cute project bags. So I went and bought fabric. This one, the so first I saw this one with the Eiffel Tower on it. And I love that fabric to start with. For anybody who's a scrapbooker, it just screams Tim Holtz, and I love Tim Holtz's stuff. So I picked that up. But then in addition, um, last year's foreign exchange student was from France. And she used to look at this stuff that would come with the Eiffel Tower on it, and she'd think, oh my god, the Eiffel Tower's on it again? How dorky is that? And so now every time I see something with the Eiffel Tower on it, I think of it till. So... I picked it up so that I think I'm a tilt and that'll be the inside of that bag and I picked that one to go on the outside I was kind of looking at some of these patterns where there's one main fabric and then a contrasting one so I don't know maybe I'll pick up a third fabric to make that contrast or maybe I'll just make it all in this kind of cool thing I don't know I haven't decided yet we'll get there one day my problem is I need to hopefully stitch these before my eldest comes home from Japan. Otherwise, she gets so cranky when I steal her sewing machine. You know, I bought the sewing machine, but she thinks it's hers. And her usual logic is, Mom, if you buy me a fancy embroidery machine, then I might give you that one back. Yeah, she needs to save her pennies. The other one I picked up. This um, will be the outside. Again, maybe I'll go see if I can find a nice contrasting fabric or some trim to go along with it. I should go scavenging through my scrapbook stuff because I've got lace and whatnot galore. I bet I could make a trim out of some of that. Um, I should do that. And then, then this one for the inside. So about half a meter of each. I'm hoping that will be enough. I'm sure it'll be enough to make one bag. I don't know if it'll be enough to make two or not. I'm kind of hoping it'll be enough to make two. But I guess it doesn't really matter. It's just an experiment. Have a play. Do something. See if I like it. Chances are I uh, will do it once and probably never again. But at least I'll have done it once. Um, that's probably it as far as my stitching and progress and all those sort of thing goes. I thought I would quickly do the Know Your Needle Worker tag. I think I'm a bit behind the eight ball when it comes to that because I've been watching people do that for months. Um, but I also thought it's kind of a 
good introductory sort of thing, anything I haven't thought to cover before or can give you a baseline anyway. So question one is where do I live? I, and I am in the tropics of North Queensland. So whereas when we used to live in the States and say winter is coming, just like the Game of Thrones, now we say summer is coming. My children dread it because it's so stinking hot. <laughs> but I'm happier. I love the heat. I'd much rather be hot than cold. You know, you can always jump in the lake or the creek or the ocean. Um, but yeah, I, I'd so much rather be warm than cold. So. So we're currently living in North Queensland. I um, was born in the States, though I grew up in the States. We've lived in the States before. Um, my husband's an Aussie, so the kids and I are all dual these days. But as far as I'm concerned, North Queensland is home. I probably will never live in the States again. I have no desire to live in the States again. We'll go back to visit. You know, it's always good to see family and that sort of thing. I miss being able to go to the random birthday party just because somebody's having a birthday party. But I really do not miss living in the States. Um, I do miss the easy shopping sometimes. Being able to get anything sent from for bugger all postage because things are expensive in Oz and postage is expensive. But so while we're back visiting, I will stock up and bring it back with me. And then suffer for another two years till we go visit again. That's probably about the only thing I really miss. Um, what do I do for a living? I am a software developer. So I spend all day on the computer trying to figure out how to make it do what I need to. Um, I do a lot of computerized mapping development. Um, so you'd see applications that have things like Google Maps embedded in them. Um, and they, I don't know, they do typical mapping things. They show you where things are, and, or maybe they calculate the distance between things. And so a fair amount of, uh, mapping applications in what I write. And then I were actually work for two companies at the moment, one that does mapping and one that just does school software. So a lot of statistics that the schools use to analyze how all those students did on their tests and who's performing well and who's not, who needs some extra help, um, that sort of thing. So it pays the bills and, you know, it's relatively easy. I'm not um, out working in the sun or up at odd hours of the night, you know, the way nurses are and stuff. So it's a good job. I don't mind it. Um, yeah. Do I have any kids? I have three kids. I have my eldest, who's 15, I think. I'll be in trouble if she sees this video because mom doesn't know. I think she's 15. That's the one gallivanting around Japan at the moment with the classmates. And apparently next time I film this video, I need to put a weight in front of that door because it keeps banging. And I assume you can hear that. Um, we need to redo the door handle. It stuck and I was stuck in my office for, well, until my husband could come along and let me out. So we took the whole handle off. And so now when you shut the door, it doesn't actually close and the wind blows it. Um, so other children. Number two is another girl at 13. Um, she's very artistic. She loves her drawing. Um, a lot of drawing at the moment. She, um, her birthday choice, she could, got to pick a birthday present. She wanted Prismacolor pencils. I thought, you have expensive tastes and craft supplies, dear. So she got her Prismacolor pencils and she's been doing some pretty neat stuff, actually. Um, and then the little one is 10, um, a boy. So, yeah. He um, is your typical boy, likes your sports, can't say he's very good at them. He takes too much after his mother and father who absolutely suck at sports, but he likes them. He's a social butterfly, you know, has 
friend with everybody in school. Always has some party or something he wants to go to. And I suppose I have an honorary child at the moment too, being our foreign exchange student. She's from Italy and she was supposed to be here for three months. So the original plan was actually that she'd go home in about three, four days. But she got here and she really likes it here. And so she rang up her mom and dad and said, I don't want to come home. And so now she's staying till the end of the school year in December. So all of a sudden I have a very, a much stronger sympathy for my own mother because when I was in college, I came to Australia. I was only supposed to be here six months. And about three months into that six months, I rang up my parents and I said, oh, it's really great here. I'm not coming home. And by the way, I met a boy. So, um, yeah, that was 20 years ago. Um, like I said, we went, we went back and lived in the States for five years during that 20, but I've more or less been in Australia since. Um, so all of a sudden I have a much bigger sympathy for her, uh, well, for my own mother to be the receiving end of that phone call. Um, unfortunately, when my children pull some shenanigans like that, I'm not exactly going to have a leg to stand on, am I? Because I did it. What can I say? Um, do I have any pets? I have one overly spastic Kelpie named Quokka. Um, Quokka's probably about 10 months old, so she's well and truly still the puppy stage and a Kelpie. So she's just full of beans. Absolutely berserk. Eats anything that's anywhere near her. Yes. We don't have any nice outdoor furniture and stuff at the moment because she ate it all. And we just finished a nice um, outdoor entertaining area, sort of tiki hut, grass top hut type thing that I'd love to put a nice lounge or something out there, but I don't dare because she will eat it. So I suspect for the next year, at least, we're going to be stuck to those fold out camping chair type things while we, in fact, I think that's Quokka there until she grows out of this whole eating things, hopefully. Other pets, we have a cat, just a domestic short haired. She's uh, adopted out of one of the fostering agencies. She's um, very placid, um, name's Abby. I had all these great plans for what I was gonna name a cat when we got a, adopted a cat, because my kids were kind of hanging out for getting pets again after we came back from the States. And then Abby came with her own name. And that's almost criminal in our family. So we decided we had to give her nicknames. So Abby is, on a good day, we call her Abigail. Or sometimes we call her Miss Shuto because my kids are big NCIS fans. Um, but a lot of the time she's just scabs or scabby because, you know, the more revolting the nickname, the better. Um, and then the other pet, we have four budgies. Um, they're not tame. They don't particularly like people. Um, they just titter away in their cage and would rather we bugger off, so long as we keep their food bowl full, but would rather we just leave them alone. Um, other hobbies besides stitching, I read when I get the chance and inclination, just garbage. I don't, if I'm reading, I want it something to be total, don't need to think about it, don't need to work at it, but a fantasy, um, the odd mystery sort of thing, or, um, Half the time, I'll just pick up whatever the kids are reading because, again, I want something super easy. So if it's floating around and it's got a dragon on the front, call it good. I don't care whether it's young adult stuff. I just 
don't want to think about it. Just read the story and yeah. And fortunately, my girls are old enough now that they're reading things that are a bit more entertaining. For a while, they were going through this phase. There's this series of books. It's all about cats, um, cat warriors or something like that. Those are really hard to stomach when I pick one of those up thinking, oh, I just want to kill a couple of hours. <sighs> it's so dumb. But fortunately, they've got a bit better taste now. So it's usually a pretty good bet. If they picked it up, I'll at least be able to tolerate it. Um, other hobbies, basically anything kind of crafting. Um, I haven't done so much lately, but I used to do a lot of scrapbooking and card making. I think I mentioned that in the last video. I've had a go at just about everything that involves crafts at one stage of time. I think knitting and crochet is about the only thing I haven't that I see a lot of people do. And yeah, I just I have no interest in having a go. I've never had a go. Maybe one day, but not today. Um, what's my favorite movie? Well, I don't know that it's like, it's certainly not the favorite as in the one you'd sit down and watch 50 times, but the favorite is in, uh, gosh, I really remember the good times. That was definitely Rocky Horror Picture Show. There's some of the shenanigans we got to in college and those nights and the midnight showing. And I miss that group of friends. That was a lot of fun. So that movie, like it's, you sit down and watch it, it's a dumb movie. But it's got such a soft spot for the atmosphere and the friends. And it's hard to go past it. And I just saw something the other day that just made me laugh. Um, I gather Disney and Fox have merged. I had no idea this was coming. I don't pay attention to that kind of thing. But because Fox owns Rocky Horror, the comment was that Frankenfurter is now the uh, official Disney princess. And I thought that was just hilarious. So, all good fun. Um, favorite TV show? That one's hard because I, I suppose I'd have to say NCIS, just because that's what is a family we've been watching lately. Or, no, I know, Red Dwarf. Um, which is funny because that's a very English comedy and I freaking do not like English comedies for squat, but Red Dwarf is great. Um, but again, it's quite old. Um, I think they were releasing a couple of new seasons in the last couple of years, but I don't know that we've seen them. Um, yeah, that's pretty good. Um, favorite book. Um, I tend to read books that are like a big series. So I really enjoyed the Wheel of Time series, although by the end it was a bit hard going trying to keep all these plot lines in your head and, it, and so long between books coming out and you'd have to reread the previous book when the next book came out. And so that gets a bit hard work and like I said, I'm kind of lazy. I don't like hard work. But I did enjoy that series once I got over the whole confusion and, and reread things and got back on sync with it. Um, I did read this Game of Thrones and I don't know, like the first book was good. The, the TV shows that they did were pretty good. I like the general storyline. But again, I don't like this whole waiting. I think it's been four years more since I read the last book and the next one's still not out. And so I kind of lost interest and really have no desire to go back and try and figure out where the last book was at to pick up the next one. So, um, and basically if it comes as a series, then you can and if it comes as fantasy series, you can pretty much figure I'll read it. I like it. Um, favorite music. Um, 
I suppose the one that gets a laugh out of the moment is actually, um, he's a comedian, but he does comedy set to music. Um, his name is Tim Minchin. And let me just warn you, if you have issues with picking fun at religion or language, do not go Googling Tim Minchin's songs. You will not like them. Um, he does have some more generic for all, generically palatable songs, but he, had, he likes to poke fun at the religion and he certainly has no qualms about using coarse language. Um, but yeah, I, he, he's actually an Aussie boy. He, um, is from Perth in Western Australia, which is how we kind of got onto him. He was doing one of these traveling comedy road shows early in his career. And the fact that his comedy was set to music, I just freaking I love that. Um, and so we've followed him since. He did the music for Matilda, um, the Broadway musical, which again, you can tell it's really his work. There's something distinctive about his work and I'm not a music enough person to be able to really put my finger on it, but I reckon you can see his cleverness coming through even in that music that has nothing to do really with his general comedy routines. Um, Anyway, so he's he's probably my favorite because, you know, I always love a laugh. Um, what word best describes you? That one's hard. I feel like everybody on Flosstube would say crafty or something like that because we all tend to be in that kind of vein or we wouldn't be here to start with. Um, disorganized. <laughs> always feel like life is three steps ahead of me. Um, yeah, I don't know. Sort of the crafty. I don't know. It is what it is. What you see is what you get. I, um, yeah, I don't have much patience for putting on a persona or whatever that I want the world to see or any of that sort of business. It's just, I am who I am, take it or leave it. And that's all there is. So if you can come up with a single word with that sort of sentiment, put that in there. Um, so I think that covers all the questions for the Know Your Needleworker tag. And I'm impressed. This is like, 37 minutes on my timer but I better sign off because it's five past ten and my guess is the others are about five minutes away so I will talk to you next time and hopefully those chatelaine threads will have arrived and I can start see you then